Hey guys, it is Tristan with Nerd Ed's Newsstand, and today we are going to talk about a book I wanted to make sure I covered, even though I did talk about this on stream previously, just because it was that good. And now we are talking about Ram V's Radio Apocalypse, and it is on Vault Comics. But with all that being said, I want to tell you why this is so moving. I want to tell you why I think with one issue in, it is already in the running of being the best indie, if not the best book of the year. Now it has to go up against books like Echo Lands and Stray Dogs. So I don't know with only being one issue in, but it was incredibly moving. Now, this is a post-apocalyptic story, and it is about a radio that is this beacon of hope. I can tell you all the logistics. I can tell you all of that and the characters' names and their motivations. And But you have to experience this book for yourself. And I think a lot of it comes to do with basically the music that is involved. Now, Ram V, I have praised up and down when it comes to his writing. His Swamp Thing is phenomenal. His Wonder Woman, or I'm sorry, Catwoman, was one of the best Catwomans in years. I love his blue and green, and I could go on and on. His Venom, fantastic. But the way he combines music and his literature is phenomenal. And I don't know why this hasn't been done yet, to be honest with you. Why hasn't someone come up with this idea? But generally, when I put on a book, I take off my music. Or if I put on music, I won't read just because I like to be able to concentrate when I read, and I never thought to combine the two. Something silly and simple, and I really never thought to do so. Well, I probably should have, because there are two spots in this book where you are supposed to play music, and it works out so well. And by the second one, by the song by Bruce Springsteen, and we are going to go through the book a bit, so I will you know, share that part. But by that part, I had to take my glasses off and wipe my tears away. I generally don't cry at comics. Now I'm saying generally because I definitely have plenty of times. But this was like a pathetic cry. Like this was the girliest baby cry ever because it was that moving. Sounds silly, but you have to give it a chance in order to understand where I'm coming from. Now the art is by Anand R.K., and is bad for the sake of being awesome. It fits so well in this post-apocalyptic world that you like this art. It's funky. It's weird. It's off the wall. And it's so damn fitting. So when you start off this book, and I will open it up here. When you start off this book, you see the art style. You see the basic premise of what is going on. And, um, you know, you maybe when it comes to this character here this is where you immediately and you see this panel here it says muse blackout and i love the muse i absolutely love the muse i actually did not know this song so i was glad to find it but you see this man in a rate you know at the radio tower talking to all the people in the sort of sanctuary they've set up to it's bakerstown and and you know telling them about their day and anyone in this area that can hear the radio is able to come and get help they've got you know right around 100 people in this area that they have to keep safe from the xenos that definitely look like definitely look like resident evil dogs right like the liquors i don't know what they're actually called but <laughs> it's what we called them when we were younger because they had long tongues and stuff but we meet this couple and immediately we see um one is injured right we have callie named after California, and we have Tan, and Callie is injured. She is unable to make it any further. They're trying so hard to get to this. And, um, you know, like even the art style here with the foot, you don't know if it's infection or if it's gauze, but it kind of just makes you want to go, oh, honey, are you okay? Like, absolutely love it. So then we're introduced to two characters, Mac and Ryan. I believe it's Ryan. I'm sh I think that's how you pronounce it. And they are breaking into this radio station, trying to look for stuff. Mac immediately kind of gets scared and runs away. And Ryan gets caught by an older man, and he is able to actually kind of help him. And we'll get there. 
But this is where the decision comes in. Whereas to if Tan is going to go ahead and venture ahead, try to get to this radio station, try to get to the sanctuary before nightfall hits. And I love this, this art, um, this golden hour look here, right? It's so, so pretty the way that they make it go. You can tell it. they need to get somewhere. They need to get to shelter. And they're saying their goodbyes. And of course, it's heartwarming. She promises to come back for her. She's not going to leave her there. But she can't make it anymore. She just absolutely can't. So she heads off. She's going to go to the radio station. She's going to be back. That's the plan. Now, when Ryan gets caught, he's not exactly like the happiest person. It seems like the older man, and I'm not sure his name right off the bat. He's not happy, obviously. But he's going to make him work for the damage that he's done. He's going to make him do it. And then we see Tan. She is talking to the person in charge of Bakersfield. Or Bakersville. I can't remember which one right offhand. And um, he's like, look, you, you understand where he's coming from. He's got, I think he says, 98 people that he has to take care of. And in six minutes, that gate is going to close. Because if not... Those Xenos are going to get in and put everyone, at, you know, in harm's way. And they've got to stay safe. She decides she's going to stay. Kind of. She really doesn't. She waits till the last minute to decide, kind of breaks down and ends up staying. Well, they are able to get through from the radio because Callie goes inside of the fueling station, the gas station, and she's able to get through on a radio and she's able to talk to her. Again, that radio is that beacon of hope. It's the idea that you can get somewhere that's better and safe and be able to eventually, eventually be back together. Well, maybe not in this case so much, but she does get to talk to her. And this is where I started to get that choked up, right? You ever have that like in your chest where you just feel it coming on and you're like, shit. There's no way I'm going to be able to avoid this. <laughs> um, but we see we see Callie looking over and she's talking and um, immediately she doesn't tell Tan, but she sees them. She sees the Xenos. She sees these monsters and the way that they're drawing are beautifully grotesque. Can we say that? that, that that's the best way to put it. Um, and, and she doesn't tell him. She actually says the exact opposite. She doesn't see any. Well, this is um, where she says, you know what? Play me a song. Anything. Anything this girl wants. Play her a song. And she says that one song. Remember? A little bit more. I, I'm actually really confused by this part. Like, we see this dude shooting up. We see, like, his little, uh, uh, I don't know, spoon and stuff, right? But... This is Ryan peeking out at this guy. Is this the ra- this isn't the radio guy. Like I we really don't know who he is yet. I'm not sure exactly where they're going with that. But regardless, um there is a new town that's having trouble and they are all coming to Bakersfield. And that's where we end it. So, um I I don't know where they're going to go with this story. I hope they keep uh, Tan, a big part of the story, I do think it's going to be like as one character would be the entire town of Bakersfield, similar to how Gotham is when the Bat family, then we're going to have Ryan and then we're going to have Tan. I'm hoping that's how they go about it. But this story was in the simplest terms, so effective. Everything that it wanted to achieve as far as the idea of hope the idea of loss, the idea of unity between a couple, the idea of not knowing what to do in Ryan's sake or being desperate. All of those emotions were so well portrayed in this book. And the music, even without the music, it would have been fantastic. But it just added that layer of depth that made it in, like I said, probably one of the best books that come out this year. And that is even including stuff like Ram V's Layla Star, which I absolutely loved, or Gilliam March, Carmen, uh, Monolith. Like, there's a bunch of books that I have, you know, kind of fawned over when it comes to this. And this one is right 
next to them. That's pretty good. So anyways, let me know, of course, if you guys checked this out last week. If you haven't, I did spoil it. I will put a spoiler warning in the beginning, but it is absolutely worth your time. But make sure you play that music. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.